Welcome back. In this video, I'm going to be going over how to set up a full node, mash node, whatever you want to call it, uh, for your coin. Now, these nodes are incredibly important for your network, and they can allow both network bootstrapping and just general stability for the network. Because if you don't have at least one of these guys online at all times, then uh, new clients and returning clients won't really be able to talk to the network. So, uh, without further ado, let's get started. The first thing you need is, uh, of course, some sort of virtual private server or VPS or just any sort of any server at all, really, that you can control. I recommend a VPS. If you want to get a VPS, you can use DigitalOcean, the the one I'm using, this the provider I'm using in this video. Uh, this service is high quality and they're also very, very cheap. I'll put a referral code for DigitalOcean like I have in previous videos in the description for this video so that you can use that to get, uh, I think it's $10 a credit and that's enough to run their cheapest option for two months, uh, that's the cheapest option is actually what I'm using in this video. So after you've got your server all set up and you're all logged in and ready to go, you're going to need to get the source code for your coin on the server. And of course, there's many ways you can do this. Uh, since I have FunCoin on GitHub, I'm going to be using a Git clone to do that. If you don't have it on GitHub yet for some reason, which by the way, you really should do that at some point if you haven't already, uh, you could use SFTP to do that. But I'm just going to be doing Git clone. In the cloning URL and it's all there now um, the next thing you're going to need to do is install all of the dependencies for uh, for this thing to compile uh, it's, it's the same exact thing as the uh, first part of the cloning video I made uh, I'll put the uh, link to the paste bin that has all the dependencies in the description of the video I'm sure you don't need to see me enter a bunch of pretty things in the terminal oh and as a, a quick aside I'm doing this on Ubuntu 16.04. I haven't tested any of this on Ubuntu 18 yet. Uh, so just to be on the safe side, you can, I know in the case of DigitalOcean, you can specify that you want uh, 16 instead of 18. Like I said, I haven't tested it. I don't know if it'll work on 18, but to be on the safe side, I'd recommend you go with 16. Anyway, once you have all your dependencies set up, it's time to compile. Easy, right? Well, depending on the... Uh, uh, the server you've got, it can be difficult. So I'm going to assume that m the overwhelming majority of you, of you are going with the cheapest option. Like I said, that's what I did. Uh, and as it just so happens, the one gig of uh, RAM that the cheapest option comes with is not enough for this to compile. If, you, if I were to try and compile it right now, I'd get a memory error. So what you need to do is create a swap file just for the purpose of doing this. Now, um, if you were to Google swap file digital ocean, you'd get a warning saying that... Uh, you really shouldn't use uh, swap files on DigitalOcean servers because they use um, solid state drives. So we're going to try and be nice and we're just going to use it for the express purpose of, of compiling this. So here's the first step. You'll just put this in and as per the usual, I'll put every uh, terminal entry I use into I'll do it in, in the description since there's not going to be enough to justify pasting. But to be on the safe side, we're going to do um, we're going to make a two gigabyte swap file like so. You will enter your password. And as another note, you'll notice I'm not using the root account for the VPS. In general, it's considered bad practice uh, to use the root account, though I, I honestly don't imagine it would, for this purpose, it wouldn't be much of an issue. But if you feel like Googling how to make another super user account, go for it. I'm not going to cover it. So now that that's done, we're going to make it only accessible to root as a security measure. Doing this. Ta da. And now we're actually going to make it a swap file using this command. Ta-da! It gives you the whole pretty output. And now we're going to turn the swap file on like so. Ta-da! And we can verify that it's on by doing this. Hey, look, it's on. Yay. Now we can compile. So just... Oops. Just like every time before, you go in here, make f make file dot unix, and yay, we're off to the races. All right, so I'm obviously not gonna make you watch all this. I'll resume the video when it's done, and we're done compiling. So now our nice pretty daemon is all ready to run. We can see it's the one highlighted in green over here, but we need to run it in server mode should be easy enough. Right. Wrong. In order to set it up in server mode, you need a... 
you, yeah, you need to add a username and password to it to ensure security. So you can actually just copy and paste this. Of course, I'm probably going to change the password when I'm done with the video because it's actually connected to the internet. So I'm going to take that, and now I'm going to go out of the FunCoin directory, and i got to go into the hidden directory, just like we did on Ubuntu. And we, and we need to make some, or not that, sorry, funcoin.conf. Remember, it's just the name of your coin.conf. And hopefully nano is nice. Yep, and nano is nice. I can paste it. So do that. I'm going to also go up here. Say server is one. Daemon is one for good measure. And um, if you had a program, for example, a block explorer or a mining pool, that wanted to talk to this, you would put in something like RPC allow IP equals the IP of the explorer or mining pool, which 99% of the time is going to be on the same machine. So I'm going to do this for something a little later. And then you're going to save it. And done. Now we should be able to go back to the Funcoin SRC and run Funcoin D server. Damn, you notice the. Did I spell that right? No, I didn't. Funcoin D server name. Now you notice that these uh, flags are redundant. I shouldn't actually do this. I'm doing it just because. And see if Funcoin server is starting. If I press enter again, it'll just go back to the shell. And now I can do Funcoin D get info. And so it hasn't connected to the network yet since I still have not added any actual uh, other nodes to it. So it's going to take a couple of minutes to actually find that. But we can see here it's just running. It's all good. So now, yay, that's it, your node's running, and as soon as it finds its network, it'll begin to synchronize. Now, if you were to, um, if, you, if you're coming from the fifth video, my cloning series or whatever, and you wanted to add this node that you just made to uh, to your list of hard-coded bootstrapping nodes, you would just take the IP of the VPS, which you can, you can see mine right up here, and you would... Uh, you just put that through the Perl script that I mentioned in the other, the other video, and the uh, hexadecimal number that it spits out is what you would paste in that large PMC array, or whatever it's called. But uh, that's it for this video, or as far as the uh, node content goes. Like I said, it's really not that difficult. No pain. Let's see if it's found the notebook yet. Hey, look, it has. So there it goes. And just as an aside on a uh, fun coin. I noticed uh, that the reward for it's halved already. Um, I'm, I'm going to pull up the block explorer real quick, actually. Two Australian IP addresses have been just going at it. I don't know if they're the ones mining. I'm assuming that they are. That might be wrong, but I won't pull up the block explorer. Never mind. But uh, it's just I'm down, we're down to five fun per per block. Get your fun while you can. But um, now that I've gotten that out of my system. Uh, for future videos, I intend to make a video that shows up how to shows you how to set up the coveted DNS seed server to take some of the guesswork out of um, connecting to your networks. Because as it turns out, it's really not that difficult. Uh, in addition to a very basic NOMP mining pool, extremely easy to use, extremely easy to set up. All of your friends are guaranteed to love it. And then a faucet, a very basic faucet. Because I actually recently found one that worked for Funcoin. That that I will pull up. If I can, the fun faucet. If you want to use the fun faucet, I'll put a link in the uh, video's description. But it's not very exciting at all, as you can see. This is this is it. <laughs> you just put in your address and you go. Now it's not part of the video, so I won't go too heavy on on it. But anyway, um, as far as upgrading your clients to the latest and greatest versions of like the Litecoin codebase go. I know I said I would do that at some point. It might not be in the very near future because as it turns out, um, the implementation of a whole bunch of new network rules makes it a little difficult. But anyway, I won't take up any more of your time. Hope you found this video useful and good luck on all of your cryptocurrency adventures. Wait, I almost forgot. Almost forgot. We got to shut off the swap file just to be good people. So it's not that difficult. Just do this. Did I enter my password in wrong? No, I didn't. It's just taking a while since I probably should have shut that off before I started the demon. Anyway, yeah, just shut it off. I'm sure nothing bad will happen. Uh, have fun.